Hi guys, it's Carissa. I just realized that I don't think I updated you on this cycle. It definitely did not take the direction that we had originally planned. We were offered to do a one or two month cycle for medication leading up to an IUI. Because we are not sure when we'll do our next IVF and we still wanted to keep trying, we decided to go with the IUIs because they're covered by insurance. However, I don't know how much. So it was kind of a gamble because it could have been 40%. I mean, my copay was a mystery. And I even tried to plan ahead by calling the pharmacy and they said, there's no way for us to tell you what your copay is until the order is put in by your doctor and you request to fill it. So basically, Mike and I decided to do a one month cycle because we thought, how nice would it be to just, to, to just do it, you know? Don't drag it out. So, supposedly, the long Lupron protocol with the three weeks of birth control prior is the ideal drug protocol for PCOS. However, um, we were just kind of feeling like, let's just go for it and do the one month. Why would they offer it to us if it, you know, if it wasn't a, an option, really? You know, if it was that bad a thing to try. I don't know. We, <laughs> I don't know. The nurse kept saying the two month is better, but you could do one month. And it was one of those situations where I finally said, well, what do you think I should do? Because you keep saying one or the other. And she said it was really up to us. So we offered, we were offered to do that. We called them and said, we want to do the one month, you know, get it over with. Even if we end up with bad news around Christmas time, that's okay. We, we just, how could it be any worse than the situation we're already in, you know? <laughs> so let's just do it. Well, because of the timing and because I didn't have any of my medications ahead of time, because who does? I get it if you have some left over from another cycle, but they kind of acted like surprised that I didn't have any more meds left. Um, <clears throat> I would have had to have everything sent overnight and start drugs the very next day. Well, I'm not used to working with insurance companies, and I forgot that there's usually roadblocks there. So, um, even though it's covered by insurance, and even though I called my insurance company first and they told me it was covered, they still pushed back when the order came through and said, we need you to tell us why you need these drugs. So, it needed further authorization from my doctor's office, and that was after... When they called and told me that, it was too late to send another order overnight. So we basically were told all in the same day, hey, do you want to do a one-month cycle? We said yes. Then the insurance company was like, just kidding, we need more information. So basically we were, we had all these highs and lows in one day. And <clears throat> I didn't know if I was going to have to skip this cycle. So I called my pharmacy and I just took immediate action called my pharmacy because by now it was like five o'clock the doctor's office wasn't open I called I got my birth control pill I started it that night just like we would have if I was doing the two-month cycle so I'm currently on a long loop on protocol for an IUI I'm not happy about it I hate the way I feel on birth control if there was any other option any other substitute boy would I take it I get the worst hot flashes at night and my leg is just I can't get comfortable I have um, I, I don't get any sleep basically for the entire time I'm on it and I'm grumpy as a result and at all times like just in a resting position I can tell something's off my my whole body just doesn't feel right um, it gives me yeast infections it's just birth control is something that I would not put myself through unless I had to and I kind of have to so so we'll be doing an IUI sometime in January, end of January, I'm guessing. Um, <clears throat> and no, I'm not happy about that because it was so refreshing, the idea of just doing a real quick cycle, you know. Same type of drugs, basically, just more intense and in a shorter period of time. And it just sounded very appealing. But if this is more ideal... I don't know, if anybody's done this before, if you've ever gone from IVF back to IUI, you probably feel like this is just, like, it's a waste, but it kind of feels like, <laughs> it kind of feels like buying a scratch-off lottery ticket. Like, 
you can't win if you don't play, but you know you're not going to win, but you're going to do it anyway. So, so what am I doing differently? I will probably do a video at some point on the things that I've done for my cycles. I don't know, maybe on my supplements or something. A lot of it's the same. I have tried several different diets. I <coughs> am doing one right now that I currently really, really hate. But it's the only thing I haven't tried yet um, and really given 100% to. Which usually if I do something, I really go all in and I really try it, you know. I'm not totally strict. I still let myself cheat every now and then. And I do call it a diet because it's not something I intend to do forever. And it's not, it's not a lifestyle change. I'm just trying to temporarily do what I need to do so that my body takes to pregnancy. So right now I'm currently on a no carb, high fat, high protein diet, which animal proteins, by the way, I should specify. I am a long time former vegetarian and I was even vegan for a year. I do not like animal proteins very much. Um, I enjoy them in, in small quantities on occasion in very, very specific ways. Like I don't, I won't eat a steak. I don't like steak. Um, but this is the diet that the first RE that I saw told me to do. The very first, like we're talking three years ago, three and a half years ago, something. The very first RE that I saw said, basically I should follow the Atkins diet. And I just immediately dismissed it and was like, sir, I am practically vegan. I do not eat animal proteins like ever. And I have occasionally, I have cheese. I really, I, I didn't touch animal dairy, none of that. So he kind of just shrugged it off and said, all right, well, you might really find that you have good success with that. Just make sure you keep your carbohydrates down. Well, I lost a lot of weight before my IVF. I lost 32 pounds, and I did that by cutting out soda and most sugar, most refined sugars and carbo white carbohydrates, starchy carbohydrates. I didn't have things like potatoes. Um, I did mostly gluten-free, but I also avoided corn. Um, <clears throat> it was a lot of whole foods, plant-based stuff. It worked. It, it did what it needed to do for me, but I kind of plateaued, and... Um, I knew that would happen, and after my IVF, I did, did gain like six to eight pounds back. So, I'm trying that. I'm going to try that. I hate it. I really do. I hate the way that my house smells, cooking all this meat and the eggs, and I, I get grossed out by eggs so fast. I like them better when someone else makes them for me, really. Um, I'll make hard-boiled egg, hard eggs. I'll eat like two of them, and then I have to choke the rest down. I hate it. But I'm willing to try it. I'm going to do it and see if the advice that I got at the very, very beginning is helpful in any way. <clears throat> the only other thing that I can think of to try, because I haven't, this is like one of the only things that I haven't done, is eliminate BPA. And by that I mean as much plastic as possible. Um, the only way that I get a lot of water in is by drinking bottled water. For some reason, I can tell the difference between, I can like taste the difference between different types of bottled water, and I can tell when it's tap water. I'm really picky about that. I'm picky about the temperature of my water. <clears throat> but if I buy bottled water, I'll drink it. And if it's, you know, if it's readily available in the house, I will get plenty of water in my system. And so I thought, even though I had researched what companies claim that they're plastic, for bottled water is BPA free. There's also other chemicals and who knows what and I've also read studies that even BPA free plastic still has BPA in it which is bizarre but it's still possible. So I bought a glass bottle and I've been drinking out of that and filtering my own water. I don't, I still don't drink as much water as I do when I have bottled water but the transition's been okay. I've always wanted one of these Life Factory bottles anyway. I always admired them at our um, local health food store. They never had the one that I wanted though, so as much of an impulse buy as it could have been years ago, I wanted the, I think this is the 22 ounce, I wanted the biggest one in this mint color with the flip lid. And 
that combination wasn't in the store. They'd have like the smaller mint colored one with the right lid or they'd have the big one with the wrong lid. So I found out after the fact that the lids are interchangeable. I probably totally could have asked them to change the lid for me, but I ended up buying the, they have a new straw lid now. So there's a straw and I've been just using this and not drinking out of plastic bottles anymore, which I probably shouldn't have been doing anyway. So that's what's going on right now. I'm kind of on an angry rampage about all of it because I don't know, I'm mad. Infertility makes people mad sometimes and I feel like I'm allowed to feel mad. I feel like even though insurance is awesome that it covered, like my drugs were only 40 bucks with my copay. Awesome. That's, that's amazing. But it's just, it's just that we have to do it again and I'm just trying to be positive and stay positive and not be grumpy or upset or feel sorry for myself but um, sometimes it just feels like, I don't know, the only way to cope some days is to be mad. So I've just been mad. I'm mad that I'm eating bacon every day and I'm mad that I'm, I'm just mad. But that's what I'm trying. And that's what I'm doing. And I will be starting Lupron tonight. And I will keep you guys updated. I love you all. And I'll talk to you soon. Bye.